Hello everybody, in this video I will be showing you guys my C++ dice rolling program. Um, I thought I would make this video because I saw that Brody had uploaded a video about his dice roll program that he made in C Sharp. So I thought I'd show you guys how I implemented it in C++. So starting off, I decided to make a class for my dice and I put all of these functions in the public section of the class and I did not instantiate any private data members because I did not think that it would be necessary for this simple of a program and anyways so I have a function to print the menu, a function to roll again, and I have a bunch of functions to roll specific type of dice, and then a function with a passed in integer parameter, parameter, integer parameter, that allows the user to roll any dice they want from one to whatever they input. So, Basically, here is my CPP file in which I created all my functions in. And so this is the print menu function. It's pretty simple. Um, so if the user enters zero, it will exit the menu and the program will terminate. If the user enters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, it'll roll whichever dice it says. And if the user enters 7, it'll allow the user to do a custom dice roll. So anyways, I decided to use a switch block for this program because I thought it would be easiest to create the menu this way. And basically, this is how the whole menu works. If you enter 0, then it says goodbye and the program terminates. And once again, one case one through six um, allows you to choose through a D4 to a D20 die. These are the typical die that are found in games such as D&D, &D, so I thought it might be useful for that. Um, <clears throat> notice how each of these cases have a roll again function being called and they also have a function being called that correlates to the dice that the user is trying to rule and I will show you guys that in a second but anyways case 7 is the most interesting I would say anyways yeah if the user enters 7 then it'll allow you to choose any number you want and it'll enter or uh, it'll output a random number from 1 to whatever number that you entered. And then the default is if you insert an invalid die it will prompt the user to try again and then it'll print the menu again. So anyways here is the roll again function which is used in every single one of these cases and this function the purpose of it is to ask the user if they would like to roll again and it'll tell you to put a Y or an N and then you enter Y or N and then if it is a Y, a lowercase Y or it is a capital Y then it'll print the menu again else if roll again is lowercase N or if it is capital N then it'll see out goodbye and actually I'm going to do else see out else roll again um, maybe I can't do that I'm trying to do a bit of a recursive call here. Oh, I see. That makes sense. 
I will rename this to, let's say, capital rule again. There we go. Just finish up with this real quick. Sorry, I just thought that that would be a good idea to do. So, yeah, anyways, so if you don't enter any of these, then it'll simply just ask you again until you finally select one of these. That's at least what it should do. Uh, we'll find out at the end of this video if it works correctly. Anyways, moving on, the D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, all of these basically take a random number that correlates to whatever die number it is. So this one, D4 roll, will equal rand, which basically creates the random number between the modulus of 4 plus 1, which is basically 1 through 4, and then it will return the D4 roll, and it'll basically, we have the same exact thing for all of these. Um, yeah, and then we have any roll, which takes a parameter, an integer parameter of rule num, and so we have the any roll integer and set it equal to rand modulus of rule num plus one. So basically, um, if we go to case seven, <clears throat> we have this right here. So basically, the user inputs an integer of whatever they want and it will pass it through to any roll function and then say if it was like 10 then it will do mod 10 plus 1 so it will get a number of 1 through 10 and then it will return it and output it so yeah anyways in the main function that's pretty much all for the cpp file for dice and then we go to the main function and there's literally only three things here we have our seed for our random number generator we have a dice object called dice roll and then we have dice roll dot print menu and that is the only function that we need to call because basically all of these functions right here are being used in the print menu function so let's go ahead and run our program. Alright, so for our first case, let's go ahead and enter a zero to exit the menu and see how that works. So we enter a zero and it outputs goodbye. Cool. Let's go ahead and roll a D4. So we enter one rolling d4 die your number is four would you like to roll again let's go ahead and try that recursive case that i was doing right here and let's see what if i enter h and it works would you like to roll again so you can't enter anything else well i don't want that to happen <laughs> i'll have to mess with that later but for now, if you enter like J or something, it'll ask you again. And I'll enter a Y now, because I would like to rule again. And let's go ahead and do a D20. Your number is nine. Again, it's a random number from one through 20. Would you like to rule again? Yes, let's do this custom dice rule. Please enter custom dice number. So let's go ahead and enter 420. Rolling D420 die. And then our random number has been selected as 225. Now what I like to roll again. Let's go ahead and do N for no. So let's do a capital N to test out that. And as you can see, it works. Our OR operator here did not fail us and it says goodbye and everything is all good and dandy now one thing that I need to fix with that program is obviously the 
um, problem here, which is if I do that, and it's going to ask you a bunch of times if I would like to roll again. And actually, in fact, this time something went horribly wrong. Let's try this again. Yeah, so I don't know why this happens. I will have to figure that out on my own. Anyways, I'll look at that later. Let's say I do Y, and here if I enter something like that, the program just terminates. And what I want this to do actually is to just re-display the menu. I'll have to mess around with the switch statement in order to do that. But yeah, anyways, you guys have seen the basis of this program. It's fairly simple. Um, don't have much else to say about it. If you have any improvements that I could make on it that you would like to tell me in the comments, then that would be amazing. But I'll leave it at that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.